Hello, welcome back. Do you remember a few videos ago we talked about what I called God's job description? We talked about when you're looking for a job, so many times we look at the job wanted listings, we look at the help wanted listings, and in those they'll have a description listing qualifications for those who, for the person they're looking to fill the job. We saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that God gives us a sort of job listing of, of the qualifications required for somebody that would be used by God, which all of us desire to be used by him. But unfortunately, it seems a lot of people desire it, but few people seem to be flowing in, in his power the way he desires for them to do. To do. I want to go back and look at that job description again and just kind of launch from here. Looking at our redemption, looking at who we, you know, we've been talking a lot in these videos about who we are in Christ. But let's begin here in 1 Corinthians 1 and begin to move out from there, looking not only at the person that God wants to use, the qualifications of being used by God, but also our salvation and what it means to be in Christ when we talk about that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we're starting at verse 27. It says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. In base things of the world, in things which are despised, has God chosen, yea, in things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in the presence. So the person that God is looking for to pour his power out through, to touch the world around them. We see here, he's looking for somebody who's foolish in the eyes of the world, somebody who's weak in the eyes of the world, somebody that is despised, because he's not looking for somebody who's completely polished. He's not looking for somebody that is confident necessarily in themselves. Our confidence needs to be in Jesus Christ. We've spent some time in the videos looking at Ephesians chapter 1. We've seen that he predestined us from the foundation of the world to receive forgiveness. We've seen that he adopted us as his sons and daughters. We've seen that we are sealed into Christ by the Holy Spirit. And that's why he's looking for somebody who's weak in themselves, because that's a person who understands that it is not them that God is that gets any of the credit. It's all about Jesus and what he has accomplished. We've talked about in 2 Corinthians 5.17 where it says, you know, all things become new. Those who are in Christ Jesus, all things become new. We become a new creation in him. Not because of anything we've done. Not because of any qualifications we had. Not because we had done anything to qualify for it. We became a new creation because of Jesus. We became a new creation because of the cross. We are healed today because of his broken body. Everything that we have and are as a Christian, we owe to him. And that's why we see here that he's saying that no flesh should glory in his presence because we have nothing to glory in ourselves. But in him, we have his anointing. In him, we are complete. In him, we are accepted in the beloved. In him, we have redemption. In him, we have the forgiveness of sins. We have been made new creations in Christ Jesus. All because of Christ. And that's what God is saying. That's what Paul was telling his readers. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised. That no flesh should glory in his presence. And then he goes on to say in verse 30, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. Our glory is in Christ Jesus alone. Not in anything that we've accomplished or done. Not in any achievements on our part. Why? Because everything we are, everything we 
will do, everything we are doing, we depend completely upon him. If you want to be used completely by Jesus, if you want to walk in the complete freedom that he has provided for you, you've got to come to the place where you're completely dependent on him. The old timers used to call this dying to self. That's not really a term that's popular today because we don't want to talk about dying. Death is not really a popular topic among the church today. But if you want to be used by God, you have to completely die to your self-nature. We saw in, in, we've seen in previous videos in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 that Paul told his readers to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. We're going to see we are a spirit. We live in a soul, which is our mind, will, intellect, and emotions, and we have a body. But we are not a body. We are not a soul. We are a spirit created in the image of God. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why? Because those who worship him must worship from their spirit, because God communicates and works with us through our spirit. Our relationship with him, our identity with him is in the spirit. When you got saved, you looked the same, you know, if you looked in the mirror the minute before you prayed the prayer of salvation, and then you looked the minute afterwards, you're seeing the same person because the physical being has not changed at this point. There will, there is coming a time when our bodies will be glorified, but our spirits were recreated in the image of God. I've heard people talk about, you know, spiritual healing and different things like that. But one thing you need to understand, and one thing we're going to be looking at, is when you invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes you, we've talked about it, He takes you, He buries you into Christ. But then you're not identified in Christ's resurrection per se, because what comes up out of that grave is a brand new being. A new creation in Christ Jesus is what Paul tells us. You are buried in Christ but your old man, your old nature, your old sinful nature did not leave that grave. What came out is was a brand new creation in Christ Jesus that did not exist before. Your spirit is complete. And when the Holy Spirit brought forth that new creation, he immediately sealed you into Christ. Your relationship with God is not based on who you are. It's not based on your accomplishments, your achievement. You can't do anything to make yourself worthy before God because his relationship and his viewpoint of you is based on who you are in him, in Jesus. You are sealed into Christ. And that's what Paul was saying. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. That is why our glory is in Jesus alone because we were sinners. We had no hope. We were destined to be separated from our heavenly father for eternity but then we heard the message of salvation we believed in our heart we confessed jesus as lord and we accepted his free gift of salvation at that moment we became new creations in christ jesus you hear people talk about you know pray for me that i might be healed you are sealed in christ you are complete in him. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in your spirit right now. The healing power of God is within you. You do not need to be healed. Your body may have symptoms. Your body may have a sickness. Your body may need to be healed. But you do not need to be healed because you are complete in Christ. If we go back to Ephesians chapter 1, one thing we notice as we're going through this, we've looked at this before, but going down to verse 17, he says, he gives us a prayer here, and he tells tells his readers, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give unto you, unto me, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened, that I might know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance of the saints. I hear a lot of people read this prayer about their Christian life, but we need to look at it in context. What was the context to what Paul gave this prayer? In context, he's going through talking about our position in Christ. We've seen it already in previous videos. In verse 3, it tells us we're blessed with all heavenly, all heavenly, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In verse 4, we see that we're chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. In verse 5, we see that we're predestined unto adoption by children unto Jesus Christ. 
In verse 6, he t we see that we're accepted in the beloved. So he goes through these things, telling us who we are in Christ. And then he closes out the chapter in verse 17. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, given to them a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who they are in Christ. Because this is the foundational revelation. This is the starting point that we need to gain a complete in revelation of. That we are complete in Christ. We are not working to become holy. We've seen in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, where Paul tells us that you, you put on the new man, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. How do we put on the new man? We take the word of God, we pour it into our soul. We've talked about seed time and harvest. We renew our mind with the word, and by doing so, we're putting on the new man. That new man is our spirit, a new creation in Christ Jesus. But until we get our soul in line with the word, until we get this revelation of who we are in Christ, we're going to continue to struggle. You hear people talk about, well, I just hope God's not mad at me. They say We say things like that because we do not understand who we are in Christ. You see, you were predestined to redemption, you were predestined, predestined to the forgiveness of sins before the creation of the world. Now think about that. In Ephesians chapter 1, again, in verse, when we look at this, I want you to think about something here. Because I, I've heard people say that, well, I'm struggling, and I just hope I haven't upset God. I just hope, I've even said things like this. But when you look at it, in verse Five, having predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption of his blood, the forgiveness of his sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. But notice in verse 4, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, but notice before he says all of this, it says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's what John tells us. That's like a cornerstone scripture you hear so much. But people seem to struggle with this concept that God loves them. The very God who created the entire universe loves you, accepts you just as you are. And I want you to think about this in Genesis, we can, Genesis chapter 1, we can read the creation story. It says, light be, and light was. God spoke the world into existence. But I want you to think about something that really takes the Holy Spirit's help to understand. He says, he chose us in him, so you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, that you should be holy and without blame before him in love before you took your first breath before jesus went to the cross before god said light be you were chosen in christ jesus to be holy and without blame that was before you ever made your first mistake that was before you ever let god down that was before any thing that ever happened in your life you were chosen in him. In Ephesians 4, it says you were when you accepted Jesus, you were created in righteousness and pure holiness. You will not become more righteous than you are today. If you will not become more holy than you are today. You were created in him, holy and without blame. You were chosen before the foundation of the world. Before God even said the first word of creation, he had already chosen you in Christ Jesus to be holy and without blame before him in love. Your holiness is not based on your works. You see, under the Old Covenant, we have this tendency to live according to the Old Covenant. It was all about what man did, and that's why there was a continuous offering of sacrifices. Because inherently this the nature of man was sinful and we ourselves were not good enough that's what the law told us 
that we ourselves were not good enough in ourselves to earn God's favor, to earn God's forgiveness, to earn God's redemption. That's why Jesus had to come and go to the cross, because man in ourselves, we could not, mankind, humanity could not redeem ourselves. And that's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul's saying, God has chosen the foolish things of this world. Because we in ourselves had nothing to offer to God to make ourselves accept to him, to him. So he sent Jesus to the cross to redeem us. He sent Jesus to pour out his blood. He sent Jesus to allow his body to be broken so our physical bodies might be made whole now, today. It's not a spiritual healing, and that's what you need to understand. You did not experience a healing of your spirit. Your spirit was buried in Christ in a brand new species of being. All things became new is what Paul tells us. You were brought out of that grave as a new creation in Christ Jesus. You weren't The old man was not resurrected. The old man was buried. And you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are, you are complete. You are holy. You are righteous. You are pure. You have the healing power of God within your spirit. Everything pertaining to life and godliness, Peter tells us, has been given to us through the knowledge of him that loved us. That knowledge is found in the word of God. It's revelation knowledge, not just an intellectual knowledge where we study the word and look at the word. But as we spend time meditating on the word of God, focusing on it, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us, give us revelation knowledge, is what Paul said. Open the eyes of understanding to who we are in Christ. Open the eyes of understanding to this redemption that has been provided to us in Christ Jesus. You are complete. You are whole. You are pure. God chose you before the foundation of the world to walk before him in righteousness and pure holiness. Yes, we will make mistakes. But one thing you need to understand as a Christian, and we'll be looking at this as we move forward in these videos, you are never once told in the Bible to ask for forgiveness. And when, when we say things like that, people always bring up 1 John 1, 9, which is a verse that... I used to go back to as well, but the interesting thing is when you look at it, I don't think people really look at it very closely. They say, well, God told me to ask for forgiveness in 1 John 1, 9. But I want you to look at this with me. John tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, did he ask us to ask for forgiveness? He said, if you confess your sins... He just wants you to own up to it, to admit that you did wrong. You already are accepted in the beloved. Your sin, your mistake, whatever you did or didn't do, doesn't change God's opinion of you. God thinks you're amazing. God chose you before the foundation of the world in Christ to be righteous, to be holy without blame. When you make a mistake, when you sin, it is in your flesh, in your soul, but it doesn't affect your spirit because your spirit was recreated in righteousness and pure holiness and then sealed into Christ. And God just asks you to confess, to own up, because Jesus has provided for you an eternal redemption. He poured, let his blood be poured out of, on the altar in heaven to obtain an eternal redemption for you. That redemption was complete before you took your first breath. That redemption takes care of every sin that you will ever commit, past, present, future. Every mistake was taken care of in that redemption. What we have now is really just a mind issue. Because when we get saved, in Romans 12, 2, Paul talks about the trans be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We've seen that, we've talked about that several times in these videos. We have to take the Word of God, we have to plant the Word of God, as we've seen from Mark chapter 4 with the parable of the sower, allow it to grow up, to allow our mind to come into alignment with the change that has already occurred in our spirits. And that's where John was telling us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we, And in verse 10 he says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. It is true 
that we will not always measure up. It is true that we will make mistakes. But he is faithful and just because the forgiveness that this is talking about, if you look at this, it's talking about a continuous present tense forgiveness. Jesus obtained an eternal redemption for you. That redemption covers all of your mistakes, all of your sins. You were forgiven before you even made the mistake. And what we need now is to wash our souls with the water of his word to gain revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus and gain that understanding that our relationship with God is not based on our works or what we do. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father is based upon Jesus in Jesus alone. Our time is up, and I appreciate you for joining me again today. Please let us know if there's anything we can pray for you, and we enjoy hearing from you regarding the things that God is doing in your life. Till the next video, thank you and God bless. Mm -hmm.